Hi, I'm Richard Bilderbeek. I'm a PhD at the University of Groningen and I'll be talking about uh, at the Open Science Community Groningen about my open science workflow. And this is a sentence you read in many papers. I took this one from a paper from Diederik Stapel, a very uh, a, a Dutch guy, so a fellow Dutch man, and he did, a, did some fraud and I've, I've took this sentence from his paper in which he predicted something. And there are many papers that do that. And it's very hard to verify if they really predicted that before they wrote the paper. And it's actually uh, common, or it used to be more common, that people take a look at the results and do some storytelling uh, about that to make the results, to make a pretty story out of that after you've gotten them. Um, like, but I would, I don't think that's true science. So I'll talk about what open science is for me. So open science is for me, it's just science that you make your predictions beforehand uh, and, and put it someplace so people can verify it. Uh, so for example, this is a quote from Simine Vazir. Uh, she actually gave the first talk about open science I've ever seen in which she says, science means never having to say, trust me. And this is a bit of a, a contemporary quote instead of in nullius verbum, which is Greek or Latin for trust no one's word. Uh, I think I, I, I like this quote so much. Uh, so I want to I wanna do science in which people, in which I never have to say to people, trust me, that they can verify everything that I did and said. Also, it gives you a very structured workflow and I would like to highlight that as well. So the workflow I will present is mostly centered about writing the article. So I won't talk about how this goes with code. So I'll be, I'm a theoretician, so I'll be writing code and my experiment is run on a lot of computers uh, and there's data that needs to be stored. I won't talk about that. I'll talk about how you write uh, the article. Uh, my workflow, I think it's uh, professor compatible. So my professor is awesome that he lets me do what I want to do, but he's still a bit reluctant in that he says that uh, that I'm also a I'm also allowed to do it the non-open way as well. He's fine with both ways. It should not cost too much time. So um, yeah, like a, yeah, a decent prof there. I also think my workflow due to that is not perfect, but I do think it's good enough. And I also think it's a structured workflow, and it, it's not completely structured, but uh, you'll, see, you'll see what I mean. So the first step is that you write down your article until you pre-register your work. So my articles, they start with a research question, and then I write down my hypotheses, in which I make predictions that I say I'm going to predict that, for example, this is a figure, that I predict something, change, if this changes, then I get this change, it, it is completely irrelevant what this is, but I'd like to write down already figures. So I make some, I write down some hypotheses as well, in which I say uh, that I, I, that I have hypotheses that something will change or not, or will stay the same, and from those hypotheses, that, well, then you write down your methods, how to reject or accept them in the end. And they also make figures like these, how the results will look like. Because they, these results should, should answer the hypotheses and answer the research question. And I do all of this before doing the actual experiment. Uh, so um, there will be some pilot runs, I won't go into details about that. but. This is already more, there, there will be some going back for, back and forward, so there will be some cross, uh, some insights that go on here. But the alternative is that you write your article a bit, you do an experiment, analyze the result, you write down a bit, do the experiment. This is an infinite loop in my experience, whereas if you take this workflow, it really goes forwards, and I enjoy that. Like, you, after a while you start doing the experiment, and done. You, you, before that you pre-register it, you freeze it somewhere else, I'll see it in the next shot in the next step. And it really helps you, it forces you to think before doing. And in this case, in the old school workflow I'll call it, you can just mess around until the end of days. So what tool do I use? Well my most favorite tool is GitHub or GitLab, 
probably in the future. So with GitHub, I write my articles on GitHub as well. I use LaTeX because that's plain text, but Word documents would be fine as well. Yeah, I do prefer open format, so like using open document text, but, but any any form of text will be fine, preferably plain text, but I can also see that there's versioning on Word documents or text documents. And I write my article in private. So there's a link here, I can click it. Um, that shows me the article in its current state, but it's private because I've not published it yet. And it will be private until I published it. And the cool thing is I, that there's some history and timestamping on it. So I, if I say that I predicted something a year ago, then GitHub will allow me to ver will allow you to verify that I really did so. Also, you can put your communication on there. Um, of course, if you really, really, really want to, you can fake these kind of things, but that's straight out fraud. I think that's a yeah, that's that's a no-brainer. Like putting your stuff on GitHub, I think that's good enough. Also, what I do, there's a tool called Overleaf. I'm not a fan of Overleaf, but it allows you to, be in a beginner-friendly way, to collaborate using LaTeX. Uh, I never actually use it, but my collaborators do. Um, so, well, that's why I use Overleaf. It doesn't do much version control until you, it costs, until you pay money. And, uh, well, yeah, so I, I use that to, to collaborate with beginners or yeah beginners and also that article is on uh, on a private uh, location but I used github for the version control and overleaf only for the collaboration and I regularly uh, sent this code to the github to, to get the version control in and that's not perfect because overleaf um, does imperfect version control unless you pay for it but I think it's good enough so when I've done my complete article I will pre-register at the open science framework so there's a, a foundation and a framework well they, they, they are very like like the open science foundation supports the open science framework and you put down your article there and you can I put it under an embargo uh, that means I will keep it closed until a certain date or until publication and the nice thing about this is that you really need to write down your hypotheses and, and how you do your analysis and it can be already in your paper but you can also um, su supply it in some, some, some boxes so it forces you to think or rethink your manuscript and I, I went back when I first tried to pre-register I think I went back to the article again and improve that before I pre-registered again. Uh, and you can actually see the pre-registration um, already on the open science framework. So that's cool. Then uh, when it's when it's on there, you do the experiment. And when you did the experiment, you, you get your results and you write down your results until you can publish it. Then you submit it to a journal, and I'm picky in my journals. I think they must allow for pre-registration, else I won't do it. And they must allow for a bio-archive version. Uh, I'll, I'll show it in the next slide. It's, um, it allows you to publish your article already in an open location, uh, but without the, form, the fancy formatting of the journal. Uh, so, um, um, but it's then everyone can at least read your article although the formatting may not be perfect. So when I submit to the journal I also published a draft already on BioArchive. So this is a, this is an article I already put there and you'll already see here that it's also published later on but the draft is still there so anybody can if this publisher decides to close it down or whatever it's still on BioArchive. And uh, yeah you can just go there. And um, well after a while it's published and uh, so my articles are open source, uh, or what do you call it, open access. Um, so well, that's what, where they are. And when they're public, I can also make the repository, the GitHub repository with the article, I can make it public as well, and I do so. So there's no slot here, a lock here. So I just make it public. So these are my steps, uh, just to recap how to get my article 
published in an open science friendly way. I write it down to pre-registration, I pre-registered, I do the experiment. Then for my results I write it until it's publishable. I submit to a journal but the draft goes to BioArchive. Then it will be published and then I make the code public. So I think that my the, the way I work it's professor compatible definitely because I already did it. I think it's good enough but please correct me if you disagree. Uh, I think it's, it's stru more structured than the old school way. And in this talk I focused on only using the article so I didn't show about how I do this with code or how to store data. And that makes me conclude my talk and if there are any questions please let me know. But well because this is a YouTube